Uh, welcome, dear audience. I am Asia, and you are listening to Clearing the Air. Clearing the Air is a podcast, and it's part of the family of Rethinking Climate. It opens conversation about conflicts and overlooked climate issues. We trust experts from a global network to find different perspectives through our learning journey. Today, we have sustainability expert and climate reality leader ahead of the National Italian Branch, Paola Fiore. Paola Fiore, she has over 20 years of experience in the field of sustainability, management, and communication experience. She has worked with many international organizations, and today we are actually going to talk about activism. So, Paola, thank you very much for being with us today. Tell us a little more what uh, an activist, who is an activist? First of all, thanks a lot, Hazia, for this initiative that I do think is very important, and uh, also for the great question. So, who is an activist? I, I think that uh, nowadays uh, an activist uh, is uh, not just someone, you know, that cares for the protection of the planet uh, and uh, get down in the street, you know, to march uh, or, you know, protest. I think that today an activist uh, is uh, someone that uh, do cares about, uh, I would say, the health, uh, well-being, uh, the safety, first of all, or their own family, first of all, or their loved ones, and uh, their uh, closer community, and then obviously, uh, or the larger community. I do think that uh, nowadays we need a shift in the meaning uh, around uh, advocacy for the planet, uh, you know, for the climate cause. And also, uh, we do need a shift uh, in creating, I would say, a new meaning for being active as human beings, first of all, and uh, as a local and global citizen. We've had a shift also in the conversation when it comes to environment. And I mean, you've probably seen it more uh, considering the years of experience you have. Do you think that the word now, considering how being environmental sounds cool now, do you think people are abusing of the word of being active, of being an activist per se? Yeah, uh, no, I would say that uh, if we think about, uh, you know, uh, abusing about some specific words or terminology or language, uh the first uh, the first word that comes to mind is not uh, about being activist or being an, an um, you know active per se but it's about sustainability and uh, i have to say this with uh, you know uh, very sad feelings uh because uh, as uh, uh, I've been working in, uh, in this field uh, uh, since the second half of the 90s, I, I've seen in the last years, uh, in particular the last, uh, I would say, five to three years, uh, an abuse of the term. So that uh, I would say uh, the meaning, you know, the core meaning of sustainability has been, I would say, completely, uh, you know, abused. Uh, misused and uh, it means uh, everything and nothing at the same time and uh, going back to the term uh, the uh, the possible abuse of the term uh, um, activist that's also you know uh, a risk that uh, I'm seeing uh, is increasing uh, although not uh, at uh, a, a very high rate, fortunately. I would say that uh, there are a majority of people uh, that fortunately are caring for, uh, you know, environmental issues, you know, and um, the impasse created by the climate emergency all around the world. So they have started somehow to, to get more active, you know, and uh, possibly they don't even know the, the proper meaning, you know, of uh, being an activist. So they might define themselves activists, but in reality, they just started to be, you know, uh, a little more active. So that might be an emerging risk. Yeah. 
That's that's a very good point. But then I was also thinking, is there a good way of being an activist, but at the same time, where can we find information? For instance, how can we be informed of what on how can we be true activists of sustainability in our planet when there is also so much fake news online, like we so much argue about, even the European Union. So is there any advice that you can provide of who is a true sustainability activist? That's a wonderful point, Asia, that you were making. And uh, I will say, you know, uh, if you really want to be uh, an activist uh, from now on, I do think that uh, you need to honor, uh, first of all, the respect uh, uh, for all human beings. And then obviously the respect for the earth. What does it mean? It means that uh, you need to put uh, being of service to the other people, to the overall community, uh, to the planet, first of all. Unfortunately, what I've seen, uh, you know, in my career as a sustainability professional and also as, a, I would say, a volunteering professional, you know, around the environmental and climate issue, is that uh, many activists, you know, they call themselves activists, but uh, in reality, they are more advocating for themselves than for the planet. And obviously, this is somehow natural, you know, this is somehow part of human nature. But I do think that from, from now on, because of the, you know, urgency, the increasing urgency and importance of the climate crisis, each of us need to speak the truth to ourselves and to the others. So if you really want to be an activist today, you need to be a servant leader. What does it mean to be a servant leader? Supporting your community, supporting the others while you're being of service in, in the real meaning, you know? And to respond to the other part of your question, obviously we are, we are seeing more and more fake news, especially, you know, when we get closer to some political elections. In, uh, in certain countries. So where can we find, uh, let's say, news that uh, are uh, scientifically proven? So news that are based on data, information, facts uh, that are connected 100% to the climate science. So I would search for this information by going, you know, to visit uh, the website, uh, uh, or the main climate scientists, for example, you know, the ones that uh, are working in the field uh, since already few decades and uh, have done uh, a lot of research, a lot of study, they have uh, a lot of peer reviews and, you know, uh, and so on. Because uh, these are the people that uh, really have the knowledge, you know, and uh, it is about having a knowledge that is scientifically proven. Do you think that uh, people who don't believe in the science of climate change can be advocating to protecting and helping their community anyways? And by this, I mean that they could believe in recycling, they could believe in picking glass over plastic, they can believe in uh, throwing the trash where it should go rather than leaving it around. Because I feel like often these two are misconceptions. I don't believe in science, therefore I must not care about my own planet, but I'd rather believe that someone cares about their community as well even if they would not believe in, you know, there's a large community who believes that the earth is so flat, quite unfortunately, as they say, can you, could we say that even non-believers can be activists by taking care of their own land? Absolutely. And uh, I really hope to see more and more of these people everywhere in the world, you know, because we need to start uh, by making little steps 
one by one, even though the context, you know, and time of incredible urgency that we are living today. But uh, uh, our brain works uh, at its best uh, when uh, we can be present to ourselves, when we can uh, see, hear, or think uh, about something that is here in the moment, uh, close to us and has uh, some kind of connection with our life. So, for example, if there is someone that uh, doesn't believe in climate science per se, you know, maybe if we go further and explore the, the reason, it could be that uh, the person um, is not particularly, you know, literate or, you know, study until uh, a certain point in his or her life or who knows for what other reason. But if that person finds, you know, helpful, doing something uh, to help his or her own community at a certain level. And this could be about, for example, an interest on recycling. Please do it, do it, you know, start from there. And then we can support those people to find more information so that they can start seeing the connection in their lives, in their work, in their community the connection that uh, they're in our, they are in our systems. Then we can tell the people who are listening to us that it doesn't matter, or it should matter that you should listen to climate science. We can be informed, but we can also make a change regardless of that science, which is still relevant, at least as well, I do believe highly in science. However, we can make a change by everyday choices. And sometimes I feel that many people would rather march down the streets, but then when they come home, they eat out of plastic plates, for instance, and dishes and cups, or they go to the beach and don't clean after themselves, and which hurts many animals. And I do believe that we are hurting our planet, even in actions that don't have to do with trash, like picking up a dolphin to take a selfie, and then the dolphin does. So we can share, of, like you said, respecting the beings and the planet around us. So um, that, that is, so thank you very much for being with us today, Paola. And you listen to Clearing the Air. I am Asia. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And do not forget to click the like button and to subscribe to the channel.